If you're using Lightroom and your photo edits are looking like this, this, and this, it's gonna take quite a long time for your photos to start looking and feeling professional. But if you follow and use the five techniques I'm gonna share with you in today's video that separate beginner editors from professional editors, your entire Lightroom editing game is gonna completely level up. Let's first kick this video off with the technique that pretty much no one talks about. For most beginner editors, the vignette tool is something that is overlooked and skipped. And you know what? Fair play. It can make your photos look like they're from 2012 on Instagram, and that's not a vibe whatsoever. But adding a vignette to your shot is one of the most powerful ways to help your subject stand out from the background and to also eliminate distractions away from your subject, which is exactly what we want to do. So let me show you how to add one the correct way. For this technique, we're not even gonna be using the vignette tool. What I'm gonna do is open up my masking tool right here, hit create new mask, go down to radial gradient, and then draw one over the entirety of our image. I'm then gonna center it over Amanda here. And as you can see, everything in red is going to be selected, which means I'm selecting the inside of the image, but a vignette only affects the outside of our image. So what we wanna do is then make our way over to the right-hand side of Lightroom and click invert. And now instantly we are selecting the outside of our radial mask, which is exactly what we want. I'm then gonna press O so I can see what I am adjusting and I don't have the mask overlay enabled. I'm gonna come down to exposure right here and then we're just gonna look at slightly dropping the exposure, just like that. And instantly our shot has leveled up. Now, of course, you could have got a similar look with the vignette tool, but doing it this way gives you so much flexibility. We could look at making the mask a little bit taller so the vignette doesn't affect the top and bottom of our image as much. Maybe we wanna intersect this mask with a brush so we can brush in more or remove parts of our vignette as well so on and so forth. There's so much more that you can do with the radial mask when you're adding a vignette this way, and it's way more powerful. But even the best looking vignette on your shot won't save it if your contrast looks like this. So let me show you how to use the tone curve and get really nice natural looking contrast. So let's make our way down to the tone curve right here. This might be one of the most intimidating tools inside of Lightroom, but I promise you it doesn't have to be and your workflow doesn't need to be crazy with 13 or 15, 16, 17 different points on the tone curve. It can be much, much simpler. So we're down here at the tone curve and we are gonna place three new dots on the tone curve. We've obviously got the one in the bottom left-hand corner already there and we've got another one in the top right-hand corner already there. These are controlling the blacks in the bottom left and the whites in the top right. We are going to look and see, we've got a grid behind our tone curve. So we've got an intersection here, we've got an intersection here and here. And that's exactly where we're gonna be placing the dots on our tone curve. Now, the first dot we placed here in the bottom left-hand corner on the first intersection is gonna be controlling the shadows and the darker parts of our shot. The middle dot here is gonna be controlling the mid-tone and the overall exposure. And then the third dot that we placed is controlling the highlights. Now, of course, when it comes to contrast, it means darker darks and brighter brights. But when you're doing it through the tone curve, you have so much more control over things. So let me show you how to get really nice natural looking contrast. We're gonna start with the shadows down here first, and we're just gonna simply drop these off a little bit. Because this image is already leaning a little bit more towards the dark side, I don't wanna to go too far here, so I'm happy just dropping them a little bit. I can then come to the, our middle point here and maybe look at increasing these just a touch. So that way we keep the dark parts of our image dark, but the bright parts of our image have now recovered and they're a little bit brighter. And then we're gonna do the same thing for the highlights. We're gonna look at boosting these just a touch as well. Now this is called an S-curve and some photos are gonna need more of an S-curve or less of an S-curve. Curve. This photo here doesn't need too much done to it, thankfully. However, if we had a really flat photo, maybe we needed to drop the shadows more and increase the highlights more. Whatever your image needs, play around here and take your time. But now that we've got our S curve sorted, we can have a look and think to ourselves, maybe the dark parts are a little bit too dark. So we might look at just recovering them a little bit. And then we also might have a look at brightening up the mid-tones of our shot as well. And slowly but surely, just with a few little back and forths like this on the tone curve, you can take your image really far. Now, there's one last thing I love doing with the tone curve as well. After I've set my S-curve into my shot and I'm happy with how my contrast looks, I can come down here to the bottom left-hand corner where we have the uh, dot for our blacks, and all I'm gonna do is raise this up. 
And what this does is adds a nice level of fade over the entirety of our shot and things look really, really nice. This is a stylistic choice. It's not something you have to do. I just really like the way it makes the photo look and feel. And I do this on pretty much every single shot. If we wanted to have a look and see what our photo looked like before and after just the tone curve adjustments, we can come over to the eye right next to tone curve. We can click and hold it. This is before the tone curve. If we let it go, this is after the tone curve. I think our image looks a lot more lively and a lot more true to life, which is great. But even when your contrast is dialed in like this, it's not gonna save your image if your image isn't sharp. So let me show you exactly how to sharpen your image like a pro. Now, coming down here, especially as a beginner, cause I know I did this quite a lot. I'd make my way down to sharpening, crank up the sharpening slider and be like, cool, image is sharp. However, it doesn't particularly work like that. We're not gonna deep dive into the sharpening tool, but I wanna show you the absolute most important sharpening step that you can take to make sure that you're sharpening your images the correct way. And that has to do with the masking slider. Now, if we have a look at the masking slider and we just increase it, it's like, okay, I can't really tell what changed. However, when we increase the masking slider, believe me, a lot is going on behind the scenes. So the key to the masking slider is on a Mac, you wanna hold down Option on Windows, you wanna hold down Alt, and now try moving the masking slider. And you can see a lot more is going on. So if we set our masking to zero, uh, you can see our entire photo is white. And that means everything in our shot is currently being sharpened. And then if we start increasing it just a little bit, you can see we're now getting like a black and white um, sort of overlay, if you will. And everything in black is now no longer being sharpened and everything in white is still being sharpened. So what we can do is we can increase our sharpening all the way up until pretty much only our subject and the outline of our subject is being sharpened. Now, why would we want to do this? Well, if I reset masking back to zero and I reset sharpening back to zero. So if I zoom into the background of our shot, which definitely isn't supposed to be sharp and I increase sharpness, you can see we get this weird sort of texture, this pattern texture on our shot, which is far from ideal and not what we want to be sharpening. So let's reset this back down to zero again. Uh, oh no, let's increase it to like seven or six for conversation. And then let's increase our masking and let's now make sure that Amanda is pretty much the only thing that is going to be sharpened. So of course, we're getting some like weird dot in the background here, okay, whatever. And then like a couple of other little things in the background, it's not gonna be the end of the world. As long as our subject, Amanda, is the main thing that's getting sharpened, that is the main priority. So I'm happy with that mask sitting at about 85. Every shot is gonna require a different masking level. And now we can come in here, we can zoom in, oh, maybe not that close. We can zoom in on Amanda and look at sharpening our shot. Now, I personally find that anywhere between 40 and 60 is usually the sweet spot. So sitting at 50 is great, but maybe increasing this even to like 65. Five, I would say overall looks pretty nice. So sharpening set to 65 is looking pretty good. I'm happy with how things are looking. However, sharpening your shot only amplifies digital noise. So if you shot with a high ISO whatsoever, like I did on this shot, I shot at 1,250 ISO, sharpening is only going to enhance the digital noise in your image, which is far from ideal. So let me show you how to remove it. We're gonna stay inside the detail tab right here. All we're gonna do is scroll up to denoise, click denoise, and now we get to sit back and take it easy. This is by far the quickest, easiest way denoise has ever worked inside a Lightroom. It was recently updated, thank goodness. It now no longer needs to create a copy of the image again. It now no longer brings up a window where you get a load of options to play around with. It's super simple. All you have to do is click denoise and just like that, it's taken care of. So if we now zoom in to our shot, you can see things are looking so much cleaner than they were before. If I turn the entire detail tab off and then back on, I know that's also gonna affect the sharpening stuff we just did, but let's just focus on the noise before, there we go and then let it go after. This new denoise feature is a staple for every single edit I do, and it should be a staple for every single edit you do too. And please keep in mind that if you're sharpening your image whatsoever, you need to make sure you're using the denoise tool if you have a noisy image, otherwise you're gonna end up sharpening all the noise in your shot 
like I said before, it's just gonna make it stand out even more. Moving on to our last technique in this video, I know a lot of beginners out there love to use presets on their images and that's great, so did I. I've gone ahead and built my own preset packs to help you guys out editing as well. I know a load of you love them, I love using them, it sped up my workflow like crazy, but a lot of people do not use presets correctly. So let me quickly show you exactly how to use presets correctly to make sure you're getting the most out of your presets. Of course, this workflow doesn't only work with my presets, it's also applicable to any other presets you have as well, as long as they were built correctly. Cool, let me show you how to do it. So. We have our image here and overall it's pretty much ready to go, except we have no color adjustments done to our shot whatsoever. Of course we have our tone curve and then we have a couple of little basic adjustments added and then we also have a couple of masks added as well. And this is the stage you wanna to get to before you apply any preset. And that's because you need to make sure you have your base edit already locked in, your image is at the best stage possible for you to now apply your preset and that way you're gonna get the best result possible. So if I open up my preset tab right here and I make my way into the pretty blue photo, let's open up the blues, uh, let's open up the blues preset and maybe let's also open up, eh, no you know what, you know what, let's just stick to the blues, we don't need to make this section all that long. So. All I need to do now is hover over each preset and uh, and see how it looks on my shot. So we can hover over blues one, blues two, blues three, for example. Not every preset is going to work on every single photo. Some are gonna look better than others and we're just gonna have a look at what presets look best for this shot. I really like the look of blues one. Blues eight's a little bit intense but we can always change that with the intensity slider. Blues nine looks great. Blues 10, maybe not a huge fan, definitely not blues 11, blues 12, and then blues 13. I think one of the first ones probably looked the best. I think blues one was really, really nice. So if we go for blues one, I can already tell this looks a little bit intense for my liking. So all I have to do is then come over to the preset intensity slider, dial it back even to like 25, I would say, is looking quite nice. And then overall, I'm happy with this shot. Versus if I had just applied this preset onto the raw photo, I would have got a completely different look. Now, of course, it's gonna take a little bit of time to go through the basic panel, make sure your image is ready to go, sharpening your image, denoising your image, and then going in, making sure the tone curve's good and following every other technique that I've showed you. However, I've tried to make that as simple as possible for you by automating that process through my AI editing system, which you can see here. We've got base edits, subject, and utility. These are Lightroom tools that make editing so much easier. It's ridiculous. I'll show you just a few of them right now. For example, if I wanted to darken the background, all I'd have to do is come over to utility, background darken, click on it, and now all of a sudden my background is darkened. And as you can see here, I've got background blur, background desaturate, background light, and background soften, make the water blue, so on and so forth. Every single tool here just does exactly what it says on the tin, and this way you can get to your base edit being complete way, way faster. So if you wanna go ahead and check out those tools, you can do so in the first link in the description. But guys, that is gonna wrap up today's video. You now know how to edit your photos so much better, but there are still so many other things you need to learn, not only about Lightroom, but photography as well. So if you wanna continue learning about photography and about photo editing, you can check this video out right here and I'll see you over there.